Happy Sabbath family, Pastor Nehemiah here. On behalf of the Father Tungo family, I'd like to wish Pastor Meshach, Sister Linda, the boys, and all of our South Bay church family a happy Sabbath. Um, also want to wish you guys happy holidays and uh, Merry Christmas when it arrives. I just want to share a very familiar text with all of you. Um, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You know, I want to share also from Desire of Ages, page 57, uh, what it says there regarding this text. Listen to this. It's so beautiful, so powerful. It says, but the gift of Christ reveals the Father's heart. It testifies that the thoughts of God toward us are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Jeremiah 29, 11. It declares that while God's hatred of sin is as strong as death, his love for the sinner is stronger than death. Having undertaken our redemption, he will spare nothing, however dear, which is necessary to the completion of his work. No truth essential to our salvation is withheld. No miracle of mercy is neglected. No divine agency is left unemployed. Favor is heaped upon favor, gift upon gift. The whole treasury of heaven is open to those he seeks to save. Having collected the riches of the universe and laid open the resources of infinite power, he gives them in all into the hands of Christ and says, all these are for man. Use these gifts to convince him that there is no love greater than mine in earth or heaven. His greatest happiness will be found in loving me. My prayer is that you will experience a favor heaped upon favor, gift upon gift. And of course, you know that the greatest gift of all is Jesus. We love you, South Bay Church family. We want you to know that we are praying for you continually. And we thank you for all of your prayers for our family and our ministry. God bless. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Hark now hear the angels sing, a new king's born today. And man will live forevermore. Because of Christmas Day While shepherds watched their flocks by night They saw a bright new shining star They heard a choir of angels sing The music heard from afar Hark now hear the angels sing A new king's born today And man will live Because of Christmas Day Trumpets sound and angels sing Listen to what they say That man will live forevermore Because of Christmas Day Hark now hear the angels sing A new king's born today And man will live Because of Christmas Day Yes, man will live forevermore Because of Christmas Day There's a song in the a star in the sky there's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry and the star ends its far while the beautiful sing for the manger of Bethlehem cradles a king 
there's a tumult of joy or the wonderful birth for the virgin sweet boy is the lord of the earth and the star reigns its foul of the beauty Rejoice in the light, and we echo the song that comes down through the night from the heavenly throng, and we shout to the lovely evangel. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Welcome to those who join us in this telecast of the worship service this morning. Let us pray together. Most gracious and heavenly Father, who created the whole world, who created us in your own image and likeness, who sent your Son to die in our place, that in his death we may have eternal life. I pray this morning, Father, together with our brothers and sisters who are watching this telecast, that we could worship your name in spirit and in truth, even though we cannot be together physically, but through the power of media, we can be together. Father, I pray for the Holy Spirit to be in our midst, I pray that you will protect us from the effect of the virus that's going on around the world. I pray also for our church, for our church families who weren't able to come for whatever reason. If they are sick, Father, I ask that you touch them with your healing hands. And if they are suffering from the loss of their loved ones, I pray now that you will console them and you give them comfort that there will be a time that's coming soon that they will be reunited in your presence. I pray, Father, for the man who will give us, who will break us the bread of life this morning. May you speak through him and by him that we can hear your words that will encourage us and strengthen our faith. I pray for this country, for the leadership, and I pray that your presence will be felt that whoever is going to take over this country is in accordance to your will. I pray for the people around the world that are suffering from the tragedy of this pandemic, that you will heal them and comfort them. I pray also for the, those who are on the front line, that you will protect them as they serve their country and their fellow men. Thank you, Father, for being with us. Thank you for taking care of us, but most of all, Father, thank you for saving us, who taught us to pray in this manner, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap this sleeping? Who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fear for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ, the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Um, good morning. Happy Sabbath. I'm so glad that you guys are able to join us today. Um, so before we get into it, let us bow our heads for prayer and ask God to join us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for another day. Thank you that we are able to make it to Sabbath and that Christmas is also almost here. Um, Lord, I ask that you be with all of us. Be with those who are able to tune in and those who will tune in later. Be with our whole church family, God, in our community. Bless them abundantly in their families. Lord, I ask that today, whatever burdens they may be carrying or whatever worries that they have, I ask that they may cast them upon you and that they know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and that they may hold on to your promises and that that may bring them peace. Lord, we love you and I ask that your spirit open our hearts and minds that we are able to receive. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay, so it is December. Um... And of course, it's the Christmas season. It is my favorite season of the year, usually. But I know this year is a little different. Um, I think if you were to tell me last year, last December, the situations that we're all in were we can't really see our families, right? Um, some of us are actually isolated. My sister is working as a CNA in a COVID unit, and... She is actually living in a hotel because my brother's immune compromised. We don't even know if she's going to be able to come home for Christmas. You know, it's circumstances like that that I had no idea that we were going to be in. But it's in those circumstances that makes me think, what's the point or what is the context? So the verse that I want to focus on today, with that being said, is the story of Jesus starting at Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, and it reads, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, 
An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. So that is essentially the context of Christmas, um, the core of what Christmas is. But a lot of people don't realize that. And, and I want to focus on that word context, because... If I were to say something to you like, I hate life, right? If I were to say that, some of you might look confused. Some of you might look concerned. Um, but if I were to pull up a cereal box called life and s held it up to you and said, I hate life, that is the context of which I'm talking about. I'm actually talking about the cereal life. So without context, you, it's misleading. Without context, we, we, don't, we don't receive the full purpose of certain things and certain meanings. So what we need is context. And, and when it comes to Christmas, I feel as if our society as a whole has really watered down the story of Christ. Because we have songs like Silent Night, right? He said, um, all is calm, all is bright. But I, I personally have never had a child. But I know people who have children. And I know when they have a baby, it is not calm. <laughs> and it's not quiet. I'm pretty sure Jesus, as a baby, was screaming. Especially in a, in a place as uncomfortable as a manger. With, it's probably stunk. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever visited a, a farmhouse or an animal place, a place with horses, a place with cows. It smells. And I'm pretty sure it's not as like the nativity scenes we see all clean. They're wearing their clean clothes. Keep in mind, Mary had just given birth. She's probably bloody. She's probably dirty. She probably smells. The baby's probably crying, really uncomfortable. Maybe it's really cold. You know, it's just like in this little place of Bethlehem. So it's like, that is a part of the context of Christmas because in Christmas is the root and the beginning of our salvation, the, the, the redemption story, the story of where Christ comes for our lives in order that we may be with him forever. But it starts here in this manger. And I want to give you some context to the Gospel of Matthew because we skipped uh, the first 17 verses of the book, of the first chapter. And the reason I skipped that, maybe I didn't want to bore you, but if we actually went into it and, and dialogued a little bit about it, the, the first few verses are the... the lineage of Christ. And if you were to know these people, you would see that Christ is actually coming from murderers and from prostitutes and from liars and from cheaters. And like these people are not good people. At least uh, we would not deem them as good people or even so much as deem them as church people. But this is the Christ that we worship. And this is the context of Christmas and our salvation story is Christ came through sinners for sinners for us. <laughs> and it's like, wow, that is the context of Christmas. And Christmas, it, it's just the beginning of our story. And, and the reason I, we, you, we need to understand this and we need to know this is because this is our story. Christ made contact with humanity and actually became man so we may be forever with him. For example, um, there was a, I heard a story of this kid and he, he played Little League Baseball, right? And he hit, um, he just hit the ball. It might, it might have been just a, a base, 
uh, like a, a first base run. And the crowd went wild on that side. The parents, the teammates, they went crazy. It was like he, he hit a home run for the World Series. And one of, the, one of the parents on the other side was like, so why are they making such a big deal off this base hit? But he had then understood that this child came from a broken home in which he didn't have a dad. And he didn't have a dad that actually taught him baseball and that his actual actually his grandma had enrolled him in baseball and so he didn't understand the context of the excitement of wow this kid actually made contact with the ball so it's important to understand the context of this story because Christ actually makes contact with humanity and if it wasn't for him making contact <laughs> we wouldn't have hope but do not misplace your hope in your circumstances. As I had mentioned before, 2020, just this whole year has been, for lack of a better word, a hot mess. <laughs> and I, I understand a lot of people have been going through some hard times. But do not misplace your hope because you don't have the whole context because just going back to the Garden of Eden, right? And the devil goes to Eve and says, you know, either this fruit will be like God. He deceived her, but he, he didn't give her the full context. She, and when you don't have the context, the devil can, can split you from your destiny, right? If you don't have the context, you, you, if you don't understand your purpose, if you don't understand how much God actually loves you, then you might, you might be mad at the church or you might be mad at somebody who might have taken scripture and used it out of context, right? So do not misplace your hope because your hope belongs or has started in a manger. And you know what? Mary and Joseph probably didn't understand the whole context either. Because keep in mind during that time, Herod was killing babies. Jesus was born in a time where, in a time of turbulence, in a time of violence, of struggle. His parents had to flee in order so he would be born, right? And so in the midst of this chaos, because we might have some chaos in our lives, do not misplace your hope. And so this is the context of Christmas. This is where our story begins. This is, this is why we remember he's the reason for the season, right? But the reason I bring all this up is because I want to show you a verse in Hebrews that really changed how I look at Jesus. And it's found in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, I believe. It is Hebrews chapter 2. And starting at verse 11, and it says, For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. And I'm going to read that again. For he who sanctifies, he who sanctifies, meaning Christ. And those who are sanctified, meaning us, we have been sanctified. All have now one source. Some verses, some versions say now have one source. And I read that for the first time and it kind of went over my head. Like, okay, uh, Christ and we ha now have one source. But someone had brought to my attention, why is it that it's now we have one source? Now we have, now Christ and us have one source. And I had to really sit on it and I had to think about it. But it's important to know the context of how Christ came. So before Christ came to earth, he was not human, right? Before Christ was born in a manger, he was not human. He was fully divine and he's still fully divine. Do not get that twisted. But he had not become human. He, he did not become blood and flesh. He did not become one of us. Okay? But because of the Christmas story, he became human. So our source is the Father God, right? Christ was 
you know, the triune God, and I'm not going to get all into it, but Christ and the Father and the Spirit, they were all one. But when Christ became human, he now shared in our source. So he fully became humanity. He fully put on the coat of humanity. So now that the Father God is now his Father. So now, it is now when he became human that we share one source, and that's the Father God. Where before, he, it, we didn't share a source. Christ didn't need a Father. But now because we need a father, Christ needed a father. He took that full step into humanity. He is now forever human. He now shares the same source we do. It just shows you the fact of how far God was willing to go to give up his full divinity in order to become one of us so that we may be, live with him forever. And that's it. Jesus is one of us forever. He gave up his full divine self in order so we may live. And it started in Bethlehem. <laughs> it started with him as a baby. And, and that is it is important to understand that. The context of where our story begins. And it's messy and it's chaotic. So don't 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 take fear or don't be burdened because this year has been messy and it's been chaotic because Christ was born in chaos. He was born through people who we deem as bad into a situation which we would deem as scary, right? In order to bring us life. So Today, I want to encourage you to understand the full context of your situation, that no matter your circumstance, do not lose hope and do not forget where your hope came from. It came from a manger running for their life. It came from a baby. It came from a God who was willing to put on the full cloth of humanity forever. That is the depths and the beginning of the Father's love for me and you. And that is something to be re rejoiceful about. That is something to, to, to be happy about. That's something to be praised about. It's just like exciting, right? When the world around us is telling us not to be excited. This is hope. And we have hope this season. And we have a hope in a coming Savior. And I want to encourage you guys today to, to reflect on this and to really give praise and thanks this season. Even though it might not look pretty, understand the context. This is our hope is in a man who came into chaos but overcame it for our sake. This, this is our Christmas story. So with that being said, I want to end um, with Philippians 4.13. And it's just the promise of uh, we can do anything. So whatever you may be going through and whatever you may be worried about, just hear this because we have a hope. And because of that hope, we can believe in these promises. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So I want to pray that he strengthens you this season. I want to pray that he brings blessings to you this coming new year. And I want to encourage you that this season is just a season and we have a hope to come. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just want to thank you so much um, for your son who who had a messy beginning, who had a chaotic beginning, but you still chose us. You always choose us. And Lord, I, I want to pray that your people understand the depths of your love for them. I want to pray that these, your people are encouraged, that they have no fear in their hearts. And if they do, Lord, I ask in your name that it be cast out because those are just lies entering their head. Just know that we know that everything will work out for good. 
And even if that's to the point, until you come again, we hang on to that hope because we're just passing through. This is not our home. And Lord, I ask that you bless everyone watching and hearing my voice. I ask that you give them a great Christmas holiday and that we may remember this is our story, our redemption story that started in a manger. Lord, I love you and I praise you. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Yesenia, for such a powerful and timely message. We're so grateful for your presence here at South Bay, but also your leadership. Church family, we never want to leave a service without giving you an opportunity to respond. And the way that you can respond or the way that the Lord has been moving in your heart, we want to create a space and an opportunity for you to do so. And so family, one of the ways that we can do that is simply by asking you to go to our southbaychurch.com website. And there is a link there that you could click on a response card and that you could fill in there what the Lord has put on your heart, whether it's prayer requests for somebody you love or prayer requests for yourself, whether you need um, a Bible study or maybe it's uh, baptismal studies or maybe you want to join a life group or get involved of a service project or ministries that we're doing here or transfer your membership here to the South Bay Church, whatever that may be, whatever the Lord is leading you to do, just go to our website and we want to make sure that we can follow up on those requests that God has placed on your heart. The other way that you can get involved at South Bay Church and participate is simply by going to our online giving. Uh, some of the immediate needs that we uh, would seek to ask individuals to invest in is first and foremost, our evangelism fund. Evangelism is huge at South Bay. Our goal here is so that we would transform and change lives for the kingdom of God. And so the evangelism fund helps us to be creative in the things that we do, whether it's online, whether it's through our drive through service, or whether it's through these other ministries that help us engage better with people within our community. The other area is, of course, our local church budget, also our children's ministry, our Pathfinder ministry, our adventures ministry, our community service ministry, or wherever the Lord puts on your heart to give, we are grateful for whatever the Lord gives you to give in return to be a blessing to us. And so family, we pray that you would have a blessed Christmas time with your loved ones. We also want to let you know that we are having a Zoom cantata that is coming up on Christmas Eve at seven o'clock. You can get that information or the Zoom information by going to our website or any of our social media platforms so that you can stay connected. And so family, our motto and our vision and our statement here at South Bay is not that you would just receive a blessing, but you would take that blessing and that you would live to bless others.